everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sharifa Namsisi, I'm a marriage counselor and life coach. And every other week, I intend to post videos that provide tools for personal growth and also help couples resolve conflicts, communicate better, and gain insight into their relationship. If you resonate with these types of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And if you're interested in having a one-on-one -on -one session with me, I'll leave all the information you need to reach me at the end of this video. In this week's video, I want to talk about why women stay in bad and healthy and toxic relationships. And I would like to stress right at the beginning of the video that this video is not meant to make anyone who resonates with the topic feel attacked, judged, or make them feel bad about themselves. But it's meant to let you know that one, you're not alone, and two, maybe help you realize your reasons for staying. I actually went further to gather interviews from different ladies whose advice could help improve your situation. We often hear questions like, well, why won't she leave the guy is such a pain? Well, if you're not stuck in a toxic relationship, I hope this video will provide some insights that may help you understand the motivation for those staying in such marriages. And it's also aimed to raise awareness in you so that you can be more compassionate in your judgment towards those who stay. What has inspired us to do this, to have the video and the interviews, are the stories we all hear from most ladies in this kind of situation, but aren't comfortable talking about it publicly. So all we're doing today is lend them a voice. Watch. However, I think people generally, especially women, go through these emotional pains mm. and are not able to leave those toxic relationships. First of all, society has a lot um, to play in this. Yeah. Um, in most cases, especially the African setting, if you leave your marriage, mm -hmm. uh, well, there's a lot, a lot of stay will will happen. Right. And in most cases, it's the people you know, it's your family yeah. members who beat you up for it and tell you, oh, how can you leave your marriage simply because mm -hmm. the man is abusive. Yeah. So you're like, why don't you hang in there? You already have children. So most of the reasons is really how your friends or your surrounding will view you yeah. if you leave that relationship. And the other reason mostly is because of our children. And you'll have you'll see a lot of women tell you now I leave my children, he brings another woman yeah. and he will another woman will torture my children. So the worry of that will at least, you know, just push them to stay yeah. so that they can cater to their children, which I think is a really big mistake. We have found ourselves having a cycle or a cycle of this re-happening. Yeah. It's because of mothers or fathers, because also men can be abused, sure. who refuse to leave those relationships. What yeah. this does to your children yeah. is they grow up seeing that. Yeah. And once they grow up seeing that, that becomes normal to them. So right. when they grow up too, they'll become abusers. They'll yeah. become abusers. They'll be in an abusive relationship, for example, and they will feel that it's normal because yeah. they grew up seeing that. Yeah. So while you think you're saving your children, yeah. you're actually leading them to uh, torture in the future. Yeah. You don't know what emotion it does to the children. It does a hell lot. Just seeing you, um, you know, fighting each other. Yeah. That environment is not healthy for them. So you staying is not good enough for your children. It's not going to help them. Yeah. It's, it's just going to cripple them in the future. Yeah. Leave simply because your children need better right. and leaving does not necessarily mean that uh you cannot co-parent mm -hmm. you can absolutely co-parent mm -hmm. and uh, your children will still see you not in a, a family setting mm -hmm. but sometimes when you go away and she goes away you both find happiness elsewhere and mm -hmm. you become friends later on mm -hmm. i have lived a life full of you know i put myself first always mm -hmm. i've never really been oh what will the world think well because in the end it doesn't really matter when no, i go doesn't. back to sleep it's just me yeah. so if i'm in a toxic relationship or a relationship i feel is not going anywhere yeah. I, I will leave it period and start all over again and maybe the society will judge me but that's on them not yeah, me no. so women or who are going through these kinds of relationships should know that to how to love themselves and know what they are worth Oh, yeah. You're worth a hell lot. You know, you don't have to stay just because, oh, uh, yeah. 
you know, I've given birth to so many children. Who's going to want me anyway? Mm. We've known, you know, people who remarry, if that's what you're looking for. Mm. Later on, I've had aunties who have remarried from toxic relationships mm. and they've gone ahead to have more children or just companionship mm. with, if that's what you're looking for. So it's not the end of the world for you to leave your relationship. Yes. Divorce and separation has never come easy for never, anyone. Definitely. The one who is abused and the one who's going through the, who's doing the abusing, because most of abusers have also been abu sure. abused before. Sure. So they are also victims in, yeah. a, in a way. Mm -hmm. It is going to happen. Unfortunately, your children are going to suffer, but it could be worse. Yeah. I think that's what you should be looking at, that yeah. it can be worse. It's easier you do it now, get out of that abusive relationship yeah. and deal with the consequences of divorce. You really also have to prepare your children for this. It is a process. It's not something that you wake up and say, okay, now I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Start the process of leaving earlier on and having conversations with your children, depending on their ages, because you don't want to drop a bomb on a, a toddler and they don't understand right. what separation is. But you can start having conversations like, Daddy and I love love you so much, but yes. somehow we are failing to love each other anymore. Right. You know, so now we are doing this because we want to stay happy, but right. we can't stay happy together. Yeah. Daddy will still be your dad. He will always be your dad. He will love you anyway, and I love you too. But right. we cannot continue living together. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to find a beautiful home where we can stay. And Dad, you can always he can always visit, or I can always visit you. Right. Children do understand these things. Oh. And they see these things. Most parents, especially here in African setup, they think, but if you sit down and have a candid conversation with them of what is happening in your relationship, yes. they will understand even when they grow up that, wait, sometimes, yes, you're in a relationship with this person, mm -hmm. but dad, dad and mom say sometimes it doesn't work out and it's okay to leave, yes. but continue loving your children. So how you drop, you drop that bomb, will exactly okay. determine on the outcome of how they, but they will still be affected, unfortunately. Definitely. Yes, you can't avoid that. Right. As far as, you know, finances are concerned. So unless mm -hmm. you make yourself, you know, financially mm -hmm. uh, independent mm -hmm. and free, have yes. that financial freedom, mm -hmm. it will become hard for you to live. So you need to find small bits and pieces of things you can do on your own, mm -hmm. to get that money and get out. Mm -hmm. A relationship is not good if it's toxic, period. So one of the so many reasons that um, I believe women stick or stay in toxic marriages is they forget or we forget, I'll talk as you know a fellow woman, we forget that we deserve better. So you have to first of all believe in yourself. You believe that you deserve better. So you choose better. Um, and I feel like because um, society has kind of put a clock, a TikTok on so many women, so we don't take time to date, we don't take time to know the person that we want to spend the rest of our life with. So we feel like, oh, um, I'm almost starting 30. Um, I have this guy that I'm dating. Okay, he has to get married to me. I have to settle down. Or uh, my friends are getting married. My friends are getting into like, you know, commitments. So I have to do it. So it's it's important for us as women to to first of all realize that this is a long time commitment. And for the woman who is already in marriage. I feel that sometimes we do get married to the wrong uh, partners or to the, I call them not to our ordained kings because of that choice that we made in the beginning without designing or without realizing that, you know what, if he is already toxic when I'm just dating him, how is he going to treat me when I'm in marriage? You know, how is he going to treat me when I have put on that ring and I've said I do? So many times we make that decision to settle down and we don't think because we think that, okay, when I get married to him, I'll work on it. I will put in more effort. I will change him. I will try to do things for him. I'll cook for him. I'll do all these things. But we forget that you don't have to do anything for a man who sees your worth, 
for a man who knows that you deserve you know heaven on earth especially in marriage now i know that marriage is not a bed of roses i mean i've been married for seven years it's not a bed of roses there are challenges up and down but today's woman and what makes me so sad is that today's woman is condoning or accepting a cheating spouse an abusive spouse because um there's this thing a man will always be a man all men do that so if i leave this marriage where am i going to go um you know all men they bracket it and they say all men as women we need to stop parting these things and babying them you know and let we need to let men own up to what they're doing because if you as a woman say okay you know what i'll accept every other challenge but when it comes to cheating it's a no no that's my stand i'll walk out of here i respect myself i'm valuable if you chose me to be with you for the rest of my life you don't have to now choose anyone else i mean i am full stop i'm period like i am the ultimate woman that you have chosen so when a man cheats it's more like he's cheating he's he's um he's he's weak you know cheating is actually um weakness it shows weakness so if you are a woman um who knows her value her worth and you are accepting a man who's cheating or being um abusive towards you you are accepting a lot and you are actually accepting that you don't deserve better and that's why so many women get you know depressed so many women get suicidal because they forget so i felt like using this platform i should come and remind you that you deserve better you are worthy of love you are worthy of peace you are worthy of a loving man and i know you might look at me and say ah but dora you um i mean you're saying this because you have maybe the perfect man, maybe because this and this and that, and you don't understand where I'm coming from. Um, so what should I do? Should I walk out? If I'm going to walk out, where am I going to go? And I understand that that is one of the so many challenges that we have, you know, as women. If we are in a toxic marriage or a toxic relationship, what next? What should we do? How should we get this freedom? How should we get this peace? How should we, you know, move on in life? Um, so many of us are like in marriages, we've been married for five, 10, 15, even 20 years, we're in those toxic marriages. And you feel like this is a man that I've known for my entire life. How can you tell me to walk out? Like what else is out there for me? And I know, at the end of the day, I might not have a concrete solution for you. I might not say, okay, you know what? If you want to walk out, um, I have a house for you. Come and stay. Let us try to work things out. But baby steps. And that's why I feel like you need to, first of all, know what you deserve. Sit down and just know what you deserve. I'm glad that we have platforms like this that can make you realize that. But baby steps towards, you know, freeing yourself, freeing yourself from that, you know, hostility, that toxic marriage. Um, you need to like design. Um, so many of us are stuck in toxic marriages and we just don't know how to, you know, free ourselves. We don't know when to walk out, how to walk out, because there are no solutions. So first step is to find someone that you can confine with and talk to them and open up to them. And the second step is um, trying to get a solution because many of us um, who are stuck in these to uh, toxic marriages, we are not empowered. We forgot ourselves long time ago. We forgot our passions. We forgot our dreams because we invested so much in this marriage. So I believe that you need to um, find ways of empowering yourself, building yourself. The third thing will be 
I always say this, you need to get angry with your situation. And what I mean by getting angry is get, saying enough is enough. Because as much as I talk, as much as so many other people talk and try to advise you, it's only you who's going to like literally get yourself out of that toxic relationship. No one is going to do that for you. You will hear us inspire you. You will hear us talk to you. You will hear all types of things. But at the end of the day, you are the one in that marriage. You are the one in that toxic relationship. And you are the one to get yourself out no matter how hard it will be, no matter how difficult it might be, but you need to get angry with your situation, the way he's using you, the way he's manipulating you. So that will be my advice to women who are you know, stuck in the toxic marriages. Um, most people stay in such marriages because of children. Uh, at Tuka, they see they've had all these kids together. What I don't want my kids to have to choose between me and their dad. Um, I want them to be together. I want them to know what family means. I want them to have the love for both. But they will not have this love if both of you are fighting. They need to have both parents emotionally happy and stable for both of them. Then other people will stay because of uh, what they've invested. You know, you've both invested finances equally. Maybe you both land together and, and build a house on it. Then you're thinking, I'm going to have to lose money. Or I'm going to have to leave this house for him. Or whoever has the kids takes the house. Uh, these investments really cause chaos when you want to leave your partner. It's always very good to seek counsel, even before you buy such, such property together or invest in anything as a couple. So that in case of anything, you know the way forward and you know what to do with the finances and the investments. Financial dependence. So when you obviously have to depend on someone to provide everything for you, you're powerless when it comes to so many things. And I interact with so many people who, so many women especially, who are trying to do better for themselves so that they can take some of that power back so that they can do better for themselves and their children. And as you see these people grow in their businesses, they grow as a whole. They grow in terms of their mindset shifting. They grow in terms of their busy. So the things that used to really bother them then, the things that would have caused disagreements in the home then are much pettier now. Like they're easily disregarded because people are doing things, you know, like life is moving on. But in a setting where the women have to entirely depend on the man, they tends to be a lot of self-pity and also the men know that they have the upper hand so there's a lot of there's a lot of commanding and those kind of situations so women feel somewhat enslaved because yeah they have to depend on the man for everything <laughs> Abachi ala faba singo obunji. Abali mela mbufumbo oboku nigiriziwa. Ala singo obunji tetu ina antandikwa. Choku vili habana. Echoku satu, omenya nyugulaga. Ngatula bao. Katini oteweza mnoga ngeenda gena nengi natandikira wa. Nobali lila mwe yoko kola. Mano mlimu genyini gokola. Cheguso vola kusasa nyumba mwosula. So it's a privilege to be asked to speak on one of the topics that I am very passionate about, being that I was uh, one of those people that stayed in a marriage that uh, became toxic and I could not leave. Reasons vary, but I think the biggest reason that many women stick it out in such marriages is societal pressure. Uh, the weight 
of the marriage is the woman's to bear in our society. If a marriage fails, it's a woman's fault. If a marriage succeeds, it's a woman's uh, achievement. Uh, same thing with the children. So many women will think 10 times over before committing to leaving, which is very sad. And um, the other reason which is even sadder is women tend to stay because of children. Uh, they would say, uh, my children need a father, my children need to be with their family. Again, society, because the child belongs to the father's side. So a child has to be raised with a father. So a woman ceases to be an individual and takes on society's role, a mother, a wife. So she's, she, hang, she hangs in there. Uh, my reasons were, um, are quite interesting. I, I am spirited in nature and uh, when I was getting married everyone was like when you get married this time you have to be this you have to be this you have to be this because no one will believe it's anyone else's fault except yours if the marriage if the marriage fails so I had I always had this at the back of my mind so I couldn't go report because everyone said oh okay that's your nature oh that's this uh, I compromised more than I should have because I didn't expect any leniency because of my character. So the assumption is a bad marriage is where you're beaten. That's a very bad marriage. That one you have to leave. But if you're in a marriage, the man doesn't beat you, the rent is paid, the children are in good schools, everything is taken care of, then that's a good marriage, regardless of the emotional abuse. And I think the most toxic of relationships is where everything is 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 a facade there's a nice car there's uh, the families go for holidays everything is nice you want like the woman won't even have anywhere to breathe you won't even have anyone to breathe to let alone share your problems because everyone is like oh my god you're so lucky oh my god you're so lucky oh my god you're so lucky so the woman is imprisoned in the facade and these ones are the worst. Even when it turns physical, the woman tends to cover up for the man. And the abuse is so severe that well, our religion, Islam, because divorce is frowned upon, when you go to speak to the sheikhs and you tell them, oh, this is what is happening to me, they'll ask the man, do you still want to be married? They don't ask the woman, they ask the man, do you still want to be married? He says, yes, I have no problem with my wife. That's what they usually say, I have no problem with my wife. All right, go back. And sometimes this abuse is very difficult to voice. How do you start saying, my husband doesn't text me? Shia, is that a problem? There are women who are being beaten. How do you say, my husband belittles me? How do you say, my husband keeps calling me foolish, keeps calling me an idiot? keeps uh, undermining my authority, even in front of the maids. One of the most common reasons I've heard from different people is society. People fear leaving these marriages because of the society. What will people say when I leave? What will people say when I go back to my father's house? What will people say when they hear that I left my husband? But at the end of the day, we are forgetting one thing. These people who will say whatever they will say are not in your marriage. It's you who is in this marriage. Your happiness should always come first. Look at your soul. Are you happy where you are? If you're not happy, these people you're fearing, they're happy maybe where they are. But at the end of the day, you have to go back to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Are you happy? If you're not happy, please do not leave in another society. Society is always that name called you to talk. You don't have to care about them. You should learn to put yourself first. It's called self-love. If it's not making you happy, leave it. Leave it. The other reason that I should say is financial dependence. Most of the women are not leaving these marriages because they're depending on this man. If your man is the one giving you the money for buying from A to Z, coming from sanitary towels to your makeup, trust me, 
you know we have because you're depending on him. You fear living. And he also knows it. He knows this is a point. It's like she's not going anywhere. Where is she going? I'm the one giving her everything. Well, the point a man knows your weakness, he will use it on you. So we need, I feel like, this financial dependence can be worked on. How about we women started making our own money? When you make your own money, there is that respect a man will give you because he knows she has some money, I have my money. So she is here not because of money, but she's here because of love. So now the money is not a point. So he's going to respect you because he knows you can leave any time because you're not depending on him because of the money. Women tend to make their happiness a complete responsibility for the spouse. And so we don't take enough time to figure out who we are, what we like, um, or what our purpose is. But yet we expect our spouse to know what that, what that means. And we expect them to make us happy. If we take time to figure out who we are and what we like and what our purpose is, then we're in a better place to create healthy boundaries around ourselves, which means that we'll be so much that we'll be able to let in and we'll be able to say, you know what, I do not like to be treated this way and I prefer to be treated this way. But you can only be able to do that after you figure out who you are or what you want or what your purpose is. Because women, we tend to conform to an identity that we assume that our spouse wants. And then we lose ourselves by so doing, we lose our complete self-worth. But if we go back and you look at the relationship that you're in and you wonder, is it, is it nourishing me? Is it, is it making me better? Is it healing me? Is it growing me? Because if it's not doing that, then it's a toxic relationship. And if it's a toxic relationship, then how is it reflecting back to who I am? You know, so it's important for us to figure out who we are and what we want and what our purpose is before we wait for, for that to be brought on to us from our spouses. So in a nutshell, I think women stay in toxic relationships because, because we do not know who we are. We've completely lost our identities in our relationships and we've lost our complete self-worth. <laughs> No gamba can fumbe ne abana bange babebechi babere bulungi ne chidala ola ba abantu abasingo kuleka wa abana babu ba yisibwa bubi ba tulugunyi zibwa be batike bintu ebya manyi kati bola bila kwabu no gamba ka sigale makaga ngenku ma abana ne wadde tulugunyi zibwa ne kati na abachala chembawa fena makago naga singo obulungi tigali bulungi Nature in bad day in Bawa, Abacha, Laboza de Gobo, Ulio Chaya Galawakao, Amaka Simango, Ate Simazibunio, Sisinzira, who go away to a dem. Bowly Ranga of Funye, Grace I am man in Bofum, was Bolo Jika Canyotia. Grace of Jika Canya, Bobo in Havana. For nature, Choko, Vedaco, Oberena Banabo, Seco, Colotia, Ulambu Jacqua, and Guida. People stay in toxic relationships because they want to keep up appearances, they want to prove a point to the public. Yeah, this is very wrong, extremely wrong. Reason being, the public you're fearing is not there in that marriage, the public you're afraid of. Is not going to add anything or subtract anything in your marriage. So, my dear friends, both men and women, before you think about the public, before you're afraid of what the public is going to say about you when you quit that toxic marriage or relationship, think about yourself first. Because you're being violated, you're being mistreated, you're being abused, both emotionally, psychologically, but this public is not there. It is you. So my dear ladies, my dear gentlemen, I think it would be good that before you think about putting up to the public, or before you think about keeping up appearances in the public that you marry, think about you. First, if you're in a toxic relationship, 
I would advise you to quit. It all goes back to your mindset. Mindset is like programming. How the mind is programmed. The series of files that are stored in your brain. So, the, since there are series of files stored in your brain, they are the ones that dictate your reactions and how you act towards situations. So, when it comes to a relationship, for example, if, you're, if the files stored in your brain are negative, I cannot do without this man. If I live in what in society think, I will ashamed my parents. I'll be declared a loser. People will say, I'm not deserving. If those are the files stored in your mind, then that is exactly how you're going to act like. But let's give it another take. If, for, for instance, the files stored in your brain communicate, you are worthy. You deserve better. You're not supposed to be treated like that. You are special. You are great. You can make it without any limits. Imagine those are the files stored in your brain. That means you can overcome any situation. And guess what? This all goes back to childhood. What things did you store in your brain when you're still young? What did you hear people talk about marriage? What were your peers talking about marriage? Or what is the perception in the community where you come from? What do they talk about marriage? If they consider marriage to be a prize, like a trophy of made it in life, then definitely you will not you will not value yourself, you will stay in that toxic relationship because you're fearing what people will say about you, what society is going the stones society is going to throw at you. So basically that's what I think dictates everything that goes around in the world. It's the mindset. Your mindset is either negative or positive. Nothing less. To the one out there who's stuck can't or won't leave a toxic marriage. Before you settle, please remember your worth. Before you stay longer than you should, look at what you can gain by walking away. And before you decide that you're not deserving of more, please remember that you are. You see, poisonous relationships can alter our perception. It can make you spend years thinking and believing that you're worthless. But you're not worthless. You're just unappreciated. Turn on your notification button so that you don't miss my next video on why men stay in bad and healthy and toxic relationships. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.